Friends, welcome to the final chapel service of the year. We made it. <laughs> this service is a service of testimony and blessing in which we hear from our graduating students. It builds on a long tradition at Columbia of hearing sacred scriptures that have been meaningful to students. And we've also expanded it to include other sources of wisdom that some of our students bring to us. So we'll be hearing from 19, at least 19, maybe more, of our graduating students. And then they'll also be receiving blessings from our degree program directors, a few in absentia, and then um, President Aloyo. So invite you to um, gather in the presence of God. Before we move into that section, I want to honor the work that has made chapel possible all year by naming some of the people who have been a part of that. So I want to begin with um, Reverend Ryland Andre Harris, our director of chapel music. And then I want to name Rhonda Johnson and Cindy Chalmers, who helped with bulletins and administrative support all year long. And I want to name my amazing student team, Amazing Grace, Ayegbayo, Tino Cousin, Nora Ede, Jabari McKee, Mackenzie Neely, and Boaz Sam. I'm so grateful for their work. And for Jeff Vaughn and Sana Rohale, and also G, who's now joined their team as well. Let's give thanks for them. For members of our CTS choir who have helped to lead us in song, if you're a member of the choir or have been at any point during this year, will you just wave your hand so we can celebrate you? <laughs> Thank you for the work you'll also be doing for baccalaureate and commencement. And for Cindy Bettis and her maintenance team and for all who helped to clean these rooms whose names we do not all know, we give thanks. So let's give also a round of applause. And for all of you who read and prayed and preached and baked bread and planned services and showed up as yourselves to cry and to weep and to praise and to proclaim and to bear witness to what God is doing in our midst. For all of us gathered here for this work and privilege of worship that we have, um, the work we have done together, the praise we have carried together all year. Let us give thanks. One final note, there is a, a possible gift for you at the end of this service because uh, Reverend Sarah Erickson is giving away books and she wanted me to send you down the hallway to share in the, to, to pick up a book at the end. So um, books are gifts at any point in our life and so I hope that you will do that. Also, one more note, we would love for all of you to join us for our baccalaureate service on May 19th at 6.30 p.m. at Decatur Presbyterian Church. This will be a service where we are hearing from our own Dr. Marcia Riggs. For her final time before her retirement, she'll be addressing our graduating students. So please come for that. There'll also be anointing of students at that service. And then, of course, our commencement service on the morning of the 20th. Uh, we look forward to joining with all of you there as well. President Loyo has an announcement from the back. Do you need a microphone, President Loyo? Okay, I will repeat. Also mentioned that we need to appreciate the efforts, the work, the passion of Dr. Rebecca Spurgeon. <laughs> Jesus said. The kingdom of God is like this. A human scatters seed in the field, sleeps at night, is up and about during the day, and all the while the seeds are sprouting and growing. Bear witness to what God has done among us. The work of God surrounds us. The love of God is visible. The wind of the spirit is moving. Oh God, how marvelous are your works. In wisdom, you made them all. Your constant love reaches the heavens. Your faithfulness touches the skies.
Let us pray. God of paper and pencils, of study sessions and all-nighters, holy God of caps and gowns, we come to you today in immense gratitude for the ways in which you empower us with wisdom and gifts to live out our calling here on earth. Holy Spirit that dances within us and among us, grant us the courage to live out these callings with bravery, with morality, and with a zeal for our God who gives us the power to do all things. Almighty God, this graduating class that COVID built has emerged from the ashes of pain of sheltering in place, of PCR tests, and of the dreaded Zoom call. And we are ready to burst forth into flight. Holy God, be with us as we fly. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, may it be so. Amen. Let us rise together in body and spirit for him 301. Let us build a house.
Friends, on this day we give thanks to the God who created us, who desires our flourishing, to the God who leads us into the mysteries of all creation and into the knowledge of ourselves and others as children of God. Folks, the verse that I would like to share today is my favorite verse. It's uh, Genesis 2-7, maybe a little unconventional, but I'll give it to you. Um, then the Lord God formed the Adam from the dust of the ground and breathed into their nostrils the breath of life, and the Adam became a living being. Folks, this is a verse that has sustained me throughout my time in seminary and even before that. I just love this image of humanity being at once formed of the dust of the earth and the breath of the divine and deeply and intimately connected to both all of creation and to God's own breath and spirit dwelling as close and as intimate as the space behind our rib cage. I hope that we can all look out and see that in one another and in ourselves. Hello, everyone. Um, my ver Bible verses for um, sharing is Psalm 139, verse 14. And in NRSV, it says, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. Now, when I um, remember and when I um, think of Psalm, actually, I'm thinking in the Korean version, and it translates slightly differently, might be a little bit expanded, but um, it goes something like this. I praise you for your work is stern, bizarre, extraordinary, so strange that one cannot dare to fathom it. So aside from creation, and which I really appreciate, um, I'm also thinking how God's work is always slightly few steps ahead of my imagination. <laughs> so uh, I um, thank all the unimaginable unimaginable uh, steps that God has guided us, and I hope to, uh, I hope all to continue to recognize years or two years later, ah, that moment. So that's my sharing. Thank you. The verse I'll share is 1 Kings 19, 11 through 13. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting the mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing, Elijah? This verse means so much to me because growing up, you, you learn that God is in the big things, the big showy things that, you know, you watch Moses in the Ten Commandments and God is split in the sea and, and you watch the 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 pain of the passion, just big things, but God is in the small, little things, and it taught me to appreciate God in the every little day things in life. Good morning. Beautiful. All right, before I read or tell you about my verse, I would like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Montisa A. Watkins, who has kept um, the fa Facebook page alive and well, letting us know when chapel is happening um, and engaging the online audience. So thank you, Tisa. <laughs> when we speak, we are afraid our words will not be heard nor welcomed. But when we are silent, we are still afraid. So it is better to speak, remembering we were never meant to survive. I recited those few lines from A Litany for Survival by Audre Lorde before my first sermon ever in life. Um, and 
it was a grounding time. It was a very vulnerable moment for me. It was the first time in 15 years that I told the truth about my faith journey. Um, and so I'm incredibly grateful for the people who bore witness to um, that sermon and Dr. Carter Florence for um, creating and cultivating a space where I felt safe enough to like share my truth. So yeah, thanks. I'm only smirking because Micah is open on the right here. <clears throat> I hope you will go out and let stories that is life happen to you and that you will work with these stories from your life, not someone else's life. Water them with your blood and your tears and your laughter till they bloom, till you yourself burst into bloom. That is the work, the only work. That is from Clarissa Pincola Estes, from Women Who Run With Wolves. It is a sacred book to me. And it is one of the first books I read in my first term here. And it is a reminder constantly that there is life and there is death and that there is life again and that our stories matter and are so important. So I hope that not only my story continues to bloom and burst before you, but that yours does too and that we can marry each other together, and that we can continue in our thriving and our transformation until we are all free. Good morning. morning. We give thanks to the God who accompanies us each day and who calls us to accompany one another, who promises us steadfast love in seasons of suffering, doubt, and despair, and in times of joy, hope, and celebration. I didn't know I was going to have to read that introduction to this section, but it's part of my testimony. I'm sharing today with you Romans 5, 1 through 5, from the Phillips translation. Since then, it is by faith that we are justified. Let us grasp the fact that we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have confidently entered into this new relationship of grace. And here we take our stand in happy certainty of the glorious things he has for us in the future. This doesn't mean, of course, that we only have hope of future joys. We can be full of joy here and now, even in our trials and troubles. That verse has so much meaning for me because the last two years here at Columbia, um, I've been able to stand on the grace of the Lord to get me through. Um, He enables me, he has equipped me, in the midst of one of the most difficult personal seasons of my life, Columbia has been a place of joy and of expansiveness and of growth in relationship. Um, I am incredibly grateful for this time. It is by grace. I take my stand in grace, and I'm so grateful to be a part of this community. Good morning. In her book, Traveling Mercies, Anne Lamott writes, my coming to faith did not always start with a leap, but rather a series of staggers from what seemed like one place to another. Like lily pads, round and green, these places summoned and then held me up while I grew. 
Each prepared me for the next leaf on which I would land, and in this way, I moved across a swamp of doubt and of fear. My seminary journey has been just like this. Um, a leap of faith from one class to the next, sometimes a face plant, shout out Greek school. Um, but surely and slowly, I have found my place in ministry, and I have overcome self-doubt and the fear of failure. Thank you. Good morning. I will be reading in the place of Evelyn Kirkland Ingram this morning. I will be reading Philippians 4, chapter 13, verses the, with the King James Version. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. When I get tired and do not know how I'm going to do it, that God-given strength just kicks in. God's will will see us all through it. Thank you. My text um, is from Psalm 56, verse 3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. This prayer was on um, a prayer card that was gifted to me by a colleague who is here on my birthday in October last year. And I have had it on my wall throughout my seminary journey, and it has journeyed with me. I know some of you will not believe that I'm ever afraid of anything, but I am afraid of a lot of things. I look so confident because every morning I read this text, and I know that there is a God in whom I can put my trust in, and I go out to face my fears. So thank you, Afisha. morning. I am reading for Garland Higgins, who is a Damien student. I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Garland in a class of Dr. I can't, I can't even, I'm so full this morning. Um, death, our, our death and, and grief class. And uh, we were in several groups together and she uh, is finishing or has already finished her uh, di her dissertation on she's talking about death and dying practices of African Americans and so I had the opportunity to meet Garland and she is also uh, my sorority sister so I'm really excited to be able to uh, read for her uh, Garland's scripture is coming from Isaiah 43 1 and 2 do not fear for I have redeemed you I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. And the reasons that Garland gave for this scripture is that God will be with me in my most troubling times. And those of us who have uh, doctorate degrees know that there were some troubling times, I'm sure. She says, supporting me, giving me strength to move beyond and keeping me safe along the way. May Kim isn't with us today, so anybody prepared to read? All right, let's send our prayers to May Kim. Um, you may be thinking that I'm bringing a verse about um, the children in the Bible. I'm bringing the little children. Um, but I'm not. Hi, Sabrina. Um, <laughs> instead, the verse that called to me to, to share today is um, from Romans one, but especially um, two through eight. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, do not think yourselves of yourselves more highly than you ought to think. 
but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in the body, we have many members, and not all members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the encourager in encouragement, the giver in sincerity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. I also had Romans 5, 1 through 5, so thank you for bringing that in already. Yeah, to share why. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> As a Quaker, we don't usually prepare our, our messages, so I'm trying to do that. <laughs> okay, I'm listening. <laughs> you forgot to say your part. Um, so <laughs> it's been my honor at CTS to witness the ministry and the wisdom accompaniment of fellow seminarians. These colleagues and CTS community members who've been walking with one another has meant embodying our faith and carrying one another in the ways that CTS proclaims to in the gospel message with authenticity in our call. Thank you. I would like to join my voice with uh, those who have already given congratulations to the graduating class of 2023. I would also at this time invite everyone to inhale and to exhale, to think about the ways that God has made for each of you, not just through your journey here at CTS, but perhaps throughout the whole of your life. So close your eyes, get one thought on your mind, just one, and thank God for that. as we offer this chorus. You are here, moving in a mist. So we worship you, we worship you. You are here, turning lives around. So we worship you. We worship you, you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, our God, that is who you are, you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, moving in our midst, so we worship We worship you, you are here, turning lives around, so we worship you, we worship you. One more time, you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We look to the God who makes a way for us, who equips us for the work of the kingdom, and who calls us to humility, 
confidence, truth, wonder, and love. Today I choose John's Gospel, chapter 18, 8, verses through 13 to 32. Uh, when Jesus said, Jews who believed in him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We are here like in seminary. My journey was 14 years academic journey. But this is like kind of temple for me, highly academic and spiritual. Spiritual word, what I received from here, it will be forever for me. It's so from God, but from professors as well, and from each other. And uh, this is a truth, it's like a ray of light that breaks our checklist and binds us to God, who is infinite in love, and knowledge. As learner grows in this place, we are reminded that the pure pursuit of knowledge and truth is never-ending journey. We are constantly striving to explore the infinite depths of truth and to share what we discover with each other. And finally, ultimately, our desire for truth and light is a gift from God. Implanted in us from nature itself, it is the search for truth that makes us free as we discover more about ourselves, our purpose, and our relationship with God. So let us continue to embrace the journey of truth seeking with humility, curiosity, and deep commitment to love and service. May the light of knowledge and truth of God guide always. Amen. My first thing to share is two words. Grace abounds. That was what Margaret Fleming, my Greek summer preceptor back in four years ago, told me after I had failed, yes, failed, a Greek quiz. And I was all thinking, what on earth am I going to do now? And she said, grace abounds. And yes, that, has, that was true. And I somehow passed the course. And it has reminded me that no matter how much I think I might have fallen short, that God and the people around me will offer me grace. The second thing I have is from Micah 6.8. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. It reminds me that regardless of what I do here or after seminary, the most important thing is to honor God and to honor creation, including the people around me. Finally, I have one sentence to share from the Gettysburg Address of all things. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here but it can never forget what they did here. It reminds me that we, I may not remember everything that has been said here, every little thing that has gone on here, but I will remember the friendships I have forged here, the community I have here, and the lessons that I have learned here. And I will remember this when I see the ways that God continues to lead me here in seminary and beyond. And so, with apologies to Honest Abe, I might slightly amend this to say, the world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget 
what we did here. Lean out the spirit. These three words, three little words, have had such an impact on me over these last really four years of my journey from missionary to future pastor. And from the moment that I was given this advice while I was overseas to now, it has been my mantra. It has guided me through some tough times from, from coming home back in August of 19 to the application process and discernment that comes with drastically changing one's life to, to be excited to come to Sir, to Sir Seminary only to have that dash by COVID, the struggle of the COVID year at our line and the joy that came when I was able to come to this place that has uh, uh, become a place of sanctuary uh, for me and found community, so some of that I was worried about coming back to the States. But all this could not have been made possible or without my faith and leaning and reliance on the Holy Spirit. And so I leave you with these three little words lead on the spirit, let it guide you, because it will do amazing things in your life just as it has in mine. Thank you. My scripture that pulled me through seminary comes from the book of Philippians, chapter four, verses six to seven, and it reads like this. Do not be anxious about everything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. I never grew up knowing that I can petition to God. This was a huge thing that pulled me through this journey. We always learn that God will do what God wants based on God's time. But my journey, and what I encourage every one of you is, sometimes you have to petition God's time. Take your requests and ask God to do it your way. Because if it's the right thing, it will happen. God worked with me based on government deadlines. I came to God as an international student, time is critical. In applications, in visas, in I-20s, in everything. And God worked with government deadlines. Yes, US government deadlines, God is great. But my advice to you, always petition. God listens and be thankful. Good morning. I am going to be reading on behalf of Alton Williams. And the scripture that he has chosen is from the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. And it reads, Not as I had already attained, nor already perfect. But the one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And his reasoning for this scripture is the following. The greatest work and the noblest effort ever undertaken in the history of our world is God sending his son among humans to save the lost race. This is the high calling of God, the work of ministry to which God has called me. Over the duration of this journey at CTS, I have taken this text as my motto and have sought to make myself available to be further disciplined for this noble and all-consuming work of bringing salvation and hope to all. I'm 
I'm glad to be, <laughs> to be graduating after, um, after about four years away from home. You know, and that's why I want to say that um, Atlanta, Georgia, the United States, and all around the world should watch out for these graduates. <laughs> we are about to take the world by storm. <laughs> yes. Because the world changes, I imagine. The history makers, I imagine. So watch out for us. One of my favorite texts you know, is from Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. It says, for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. And that's why as we go forth in this time, in this season, our lives and our future it's in the plans of God and not in our plan. And that's why we will continue to trust God, you know, for the journey ahead. Because we know God is with us. God is going ahead of us. God is backing us up. And so, like I said, to close, watch out for us because you will hear the news. The scripture that has bookended my time in seminary, Matt has already read from the time that I visited Columbia as a prospective student to taking 8th century prophets with Dr. Breed. And so instead, I'll offer a piece of advice. So all of us know that anything worth doing is worth doing well. And this is a group of dedicated, hardworking people. But in the words of Alice Wilson Whitson, anything worth doing is worth doing poorly because that's what allows us to take risks and to try something new and to let the spirit lead beyond our imagination. As we move into the next section, I want to note the time. It's 5 to 11, so if you have class, we bless you on your way to class. But if you can stay, we invite you to stay for this next section of blessing from our degree program directors. And before we do that, I also want to give thanks for Dr. Montisa Watkins, who I forgot to mention earlier, but who is unforgettable. And we are so grateful, Dr. Tisa, for all of the ways. We couldn't do it without you, so I want to say that as well. And now we'll move into this section of blessing. Humbly, on behalf of your faculty, receive this blessing. Practical theology honors and is accountable to experiences in daily life. Therefore, remember to notice beauty and pain. Listen deeply. Believe what you see and hear. Say, I believe you, out loud. Listen to yourself while also listening with and to other peoples and places. Practical theology knows that Bible, theologies, histories, and practices of ministry can be tools of trauma, just as they can be instruments of transformation. Therefore, interpret sacred texts well. Promote theologies of life. Tell the truth about histories. Practice ministries of more hopeful, more just, more creative futures. Practical theology is a group project for life. You are not alone, and do not try this alone. <laughs> Therefore, cultivate diverse partnerships. Honor ancestors. Be a mentor. Learn from children. Believe in the power and practice of accountability. Be a community. Foster robust networks of support and dream big. Finally, practical theology is rooted in practice. Therefore, take time to reflect on your practices, on what you know. Learn to keep expanding how you know. Be a pastor and a prophet. Have patience with yourself and join change-making protests that can't wait. Practice your theology boldly, with humility and grace. We believe in you, and we bless you on your many ways.
And I'll be reading on behalf of Dr. Mark Douglas, director of the THM program who wanted to be here but couldn't be here today. He offers this blessing especially to the graduating THM students, but I also extend it to the rest of you. He says, <clears throat> you've come from all over the world and from a wide range of ecclesial traditions. And in spite of some bumps along the way, you've not only made this place your home, you've changed it for the better through your presence in the classroom and on campus. As you prepare to begin your lives as THM graduates of Columbia, I would invite you to remember these three things. First, that individually each of you has modeled wise and erudite scholarship of the sort that can make a difference in the world. Don't let anyone ever tell you that scholarly work cannot change the world or that your work doesn't measure up. We know better. And if you ever have any doubts, just check in with us and we'll confirm it for you. Second, that as a cohort, you have collectively modeled intercultural intelligence of the sort that CTS will increasingly form in the next years. Don't let anyone ever tell you that you wasted time by learning with people who are different from you or that building networks of relationships does not foster the very types of resilience we all will increasingly need in this changing world. You know this, and if you ever have any doubts, just check in with each other. And third, that as graduates of this degree at CTS, you are now among an elite group of ambassadors, not only of the seminary, but of the gospel of Jesus Christ, proclaimed in fresh and sometimes startling ways for a world in desperate need of good news. Don't let anyone ever tell you that there is no good news for dark times or that the witness you bear is insufficient to the world's needs. The very grace that brought you here and bonded you to each other will be more than enough for what comes next. And if you ever have any doubts, just remember this past year and the way that God has acted in you and around you in this space. It has been an utter privilege to have this year with you, these years with you, and I wish you only the best in your next step. A beloved former pastor of mine ended every worship service with the same benediction, and it has lodged deeply in my soul, and I offer it to you. May the God who seeks you find you when you fall. May the God who loves you take delight in your living. And may the God who sends you send you out now with joy. For in your gladness and in your grieving, in your brokenness and in your healing, in your faithfulness, and in your leaving. The God who made you and redeemed you is the God who keeps you still. In the spirit of my colleague who shared the benediction offered by a mentor, I will do the same, a mentor that nurtured me from my first field education experience all the way through PhD dissertation to this present day. As you go out and as you come in, in your down sitting, in your uprising, in your work, in your play, yea, even in your joy, in your sorrows. The Lord bless you and keep you, and may you go and make a difference in this world. Amen. Amen. There have been times in my ministry where uh, as a result of circumstances in my life, situations that surround us, 
that challenge the very core of our faith and the very core of our call, we wonder why. There will be those moments. There will be those moments in which we wonder why we entered three, two, four years of theological education and wondered whether we are prepared. There will be moments in which we will rejoice and celebrate with those in whom we'll be touched by not only your words, but by your actions. <coughs> in those moments, I wish to share with you how I was fortified by a text that came upon a time where I wrestled with God. Where I wrestled with God because of the personal losses that I experienced, because of the moments of trauma, because in my first congregation in which God called me to a congregation of 12 individuals, within the first four months, I had to administer eight funeral services. Moments in which we never expect and understand. And so I share this text with you today because you are called by a God that sustains us in every moment of our lives. And this text I wish to share with you at this moment, which is Psalm 62. And Psalm 62 serves as a foundation for my ministry and my life. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from God. Truly, God is my rock and my salvation. God is my fortress. I will never be shaken. The God that has called you is your fortress, is your rock, is your strength, is your sustainer, is your hiding place. And you can find rest in him. Praise be to God. Let us now come to God in prayer, in a prayer that is woven from words and sentiments shared by many of you who are graduating today. Let us pray. Holy God of our past, present, and future, way beyond all journeying, truth beyond all mystery, life within all our living, we praise you. For the breath of the Spirit breathing in us, and through all those who prompted and sustained our journeys to this place, pastors, friends, mentors, congregations, we praise you. For the wit, wisdom, and compassion of all who participated in our growth and transformation, for staff and fellow students, for faculty and administrators, all those we encountered on our way. For the steadfast love of our beloved ones, compassionate friends, resilient families and partners, our tender animal companions, and all those who have kept us company and encouraged us in our tears and in our laughter, in seasons of doubt and celebration. For the grace and beauty of places that sheltered and nourished us, the library, the chapel, the CTS garden, the patio, common tables, the tea olive tree near Florida Hall, your DeKalb Farmer's Market, and other places. For the miracle of communion with those we have not known before in quite this way, 
for shedding mistruths and stereotypes that have weighed on our hearts like stones, for opening us to love others and ourselves, even in weariness, even in doubt, also in pride. And now, O oh God, stir us up and abide with us as we journey on. May we seek thriving for all of creation and choose vulnerability in all our strengths and weaknesses. May we honor space and time for rest, joy, and wonder. May we cultivate the capacity to serve and recognize what service looks like and feels like in each situation we find ourselves in. May we be called children of God, peacemakers, blessed ones. May this great banquet of friends and colleagues, the richness of community here be a fountain of blessing in our lives and in the lives of all those we meet for years to come. Let us build with you a house, a world, a garden, where righteousness reigns, where we do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Amen. Friends, as we come together and celebrate the accomplishments and the milestones of our siblings in the faith, I ask and I invite that we all raise our hands and offer blessings upon each other and upon this community. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace today and always.